good morning guys and here's another quick video i hope really don't know how it will go but i try to make it as short as possible today it will be around setting up your game right before you even take it to the track because there are a couple things that you should really take care of so this is where we go into the option screen of the game um most importantly i think we should start with audio and some of you who might come from from iRacing or so where you know um, there's not so much information in the force feedback because iRacing has very low force feedback frequency at just 60 hertz whereas ACC for example has five times that even a little more uh, of 333 hertz that just means the game sends a new force feedback command every three milliseconds on ACC and on um, iRacing that is only every 16 milliseconds so five times er, let's just say it's five times longer on on iRacing to receive a new force feedback command and, you, and that's why it's um one of these games where you rely a lot on different information other than the first feedback sometimes and in particular in iRacing and this is also true for acc i must say is the tie-in noise is really one of the most important um, information streams that you can have as a sim racer because it tells you a lot of how much grip you're using so to break that down very simple you want to hear the tire above everything else so if you go to my audio options you will see okay the tire noise is on 100% and everything else is a tiny bit lower just because it makes the important information stand out a tiny bit more you can hear and perceive the tire a little bit better and this really nothing you really need to listen out for i think it will kind of work out for you automatically as you drive along you will learn to hear to the different audio levels of the tire and um, this will go alongside with how the car how quickly the car rotates how it behaves and sooner or later it will sink in so for now just increase the tire volume to the maximum as desired turn everything else down a bit just so it's a little more pronounced it's a very easy setting to do but i guess there's a lot of value in it then there is definitely a lot more in the controls and i really ha have to take a bigger bigger sweep here um i want to talk first about the controller steering lock um every car you have in the game is has been designed in the real world of course and the engineers thought something or puts thought into how the steering of the car should be designed. So you have cars that have 480 degrees side to side of steering lock and there is, uh, I think the McLaren starts at 480 and then you have the Porsche for example that goes up to 800 degrees. So there is by design a different sensitivity in these steering locks and probably also the maximum steer the tire can actually have. Um, Generally, just to be sure you set up everything right, your target is that the steering wheel you have in front of you, the physical one, so your log attack, trust merger, fan attack, or custom wheel, whatever you have, needs to turn the exact same amount as the wheel in the game. And the way to do this on um, most manufacturers, so Logitech, Fan Attack, Trustmaster, those big brands, um, I think even Simucube by now is supported by most games. Uh, the game takes over of that automatically if you set it up right. And the way to do this is very simple in ACC because ACC sorts it for yourself as long as you get the basics right. And the basics would be you need to set ACC to 900 uh, degrees. I mean, could be it could be that as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think you need to, yeah, if you go here, then so go to maximum and then you turn it down until you reach that 900 um, degrees precisely because this is there's no car in the game that has more so with 900 you're safe um, then you go to your driver so final lab or logitech gaming software um, or what's new the uh, you want the logitech g hub um, don't know what it's called for trustmaster really but you go to that software and set the wheel to 900 degrees as well um, for Fanatec when you have it on the steering wheel it's safe on the small dif display you set it to 900 degrees there as well just make sure you have the same in the game you have the same in the driver of your wheel from there acc will take over of the steering lock on its own and you don't really ever have to touch that again and on these uh, mainstream manufacturers it will also put a soft lock um there um, at the point where 
the car actually has its stop so you get an indication of where there isn't any point to turn more. So if you set it to 900 and you drive the McLaren, then ACC would tell the wheel here you reach 480 degrees or in one direction that will be 240. Um, this is where it stops so you would feel that in the force feedback giving you a small indication, resistance or something to know this is where uh, the steering lock of this car ends. But the important bit is you'd have everything in sync this way. Uh, the next thing is steer linearity. Don't touch it. That's it. Brake gamma. Unless you... Well, I'm not entirely sure about the whole Logitech side of things why you have travel based pedals. want to talk about that. But I think in general you're also fine just leaving everything linear. Because if you add more sensitivity you'll just have it way more difficult to be precise in the braking. So. I'd say just leave these settings as they are and work with the pedals as they are. And if you have a um, better set of pedals uh, with a load cell, so it could be the fan attacks, could be the housing valves or any, there are many third, uh, third parties by now with these pedals. Um, you can go to my website, by the way, uh, to the hardware section. I've made a huge list of basically every sim racing hardware there is, and there are probably 10 10 or so different um, pedal suppliers uh, that you could find there, just as a side note. Uh, so on load cell pedals, you just want to set them up in the driver and not fiddle with it in the game really, so don't touch it here. Um, the next thing I really want to talk about then is for feedback, because I think there are, oh, better not change it. Um, uh, there are some misconceptions here too. And I show you on screenshots um, um, as I edit the video later. There's one thing that's the most important for you in terms of force feedback, and that is force feedback clipping. Which just means your wheel has a certain amount of forces it can't produce. And once you go over the total amount of forces, the wheel will start clipping, which just means it can't display any more detail because it already uses its maximum capacity. So this is something that's especially important on, on weaker wheels, on entry-level wheels like the um, the Logitech with its about one and a half, two newt meters or something, um, with a Trustmaster T300, which is slightly above that, maybe three or something, I, I'm not entirely sure. And then you have the, the higher Trustmasters and Fanatex that go into the five to eight newt meter range. And anything above that really is um, a direct drive starting from 10 newton meters or something and in my case I can go up to 20 newton meters. Um, what I'm on about is the weaker your wheel is the easier you run into clipping because the game sends so much information to you that the wheel at some point just can't handle it anymore. And there are um, two settings in ACC that are really important. Um, let's start somewhere else though because in your driver so you go back to your Trustmaster, Fanatec, Logitech software or whatever custom wheel you have. And um, especially on weaker wheels, you want uh, in the driver just to allow 100% of the forces the wheel is capable of. So set in the driver, you just go to 100% to make sure the wheel really um, is allowed basically by the driver to use all the forces the motor can produce. On direct drive, it's a different story because most of the time you don't want to have 20 newton meters because it's way too much, it breaks your hands. But on these weaker wheels, you really want to at least be sure to go into the driver, set it to the maximum capacity. And then you go inside the game and make adjustments here, which is then the gain and especially the dynamic damping. What dynamic damping does in ACC is it gives weight to um, the front wheels since um, things that are rotating become heavier or more difficult to change their direction. So as you go faster, the steering becomes heavier. And um, on the real car, as you go 250 down the straight, this, these forces become really high, it becomes really difficult to turn the wheel. And only really direct drive wheels can take this up to the level where the real car really has it. So you can see for me, having direct drive wheel, I have dynamic damping on 100% just to have the maximum of these um, uh, gyro, gyro forces of the front wheels spinning quickly and having weight that makes it harder to turn and as you go slower these forces decrease. The problem now is on weaker wheels this dynamic damping can cause problems because 
it uses the whole capacity of your wheel. Which means if ACC puts out a command, this is like, which is like five to 10 Newton meters or something, then your lower end wheel will have, okay, this is all I have. So um, I'm sending all the, or I'm using all the force to, to mimic the gyro forces, but there's nothing left for any detail. And this is where then the clipping starts that you lose all this detail. So on weaker wheels, you really just want to go lower in the dynamic damping to avoid clipping. The same is true for the gain. That's just the overall slider for how um, big your force feedback settings are. So in my case, I have my driver of the driving force wheel set to above uh, um, around 16 Newton meters. And then in ACC, I limit that to 55% of that. So I'm driving with a maximum of around 10 Newton meters in my driving. Um, so if you go to your um, Logitech Trustmaster Fanatec software right now, you set that to 100% and then you go to the game. And how do you find out which settings are right for you? Basically, you want to avoid the clipping, let's say 90% of the time. In some occasions it's fine because there's no real additional detail to be displayed, but um, most of the time you want to have that free range to always have the detail in the force feedback. And the weaker the wheel, the lower you have to go on the dynamic damping and with a gain factor as well. Both of these, just as a starting point, start with a 50% gain and maybe 70% dynamic damping. That's really down to each individual wheel and cardio driving, everything kind of influences it. But what you basically want to check is, and I'll display this like right now, um, is on the bottom right of your screen while you have the pedal bars, there's a third bar for the clipping indicator or rather the force feedback amount indicator, which is just a gray bar as long as everything is fine and it turns red as soon as the clipping starts. And you will see this on our Aris uh, streams a lot because he is um, um, having, having his wheel set up in a way so he can uh, really see the clipping for development purposes. and. Um, Usually on my streams, you wouldn't see the wheel ever clipping because I always want to remain having, uh, keep having that detail. And probably on, on many lower end wheels, you'll get problems because they don't have that range. So as you as you set up in the controllers, go just go drive a bit. And on ACC, you can change the controls on the fly. So you just drive around a bit, do a corner. And if you already see the force feedback bar clipping, uh, in the bottom right corner, you know, okay, you maybe have to do some changes to your force feedback settings and just starting with um, lowering dynamic damping if it's in the fast corners in particular, for example, or if it's happening all the time over bumps, then it's probably more around the gain factor that you want to reduce here. Um, I think this is already it as a start for the whole controller bit. The next thing I want to talk about is, um, well, if your wheel is in sync in, in a different way. And therefore, this is more about the videos, video settings this time around. Um, I've mentioned earlier that you want to have your wheel in sync with the amount of rotation you do versus the amount the in-game wheel does. And there is a second thing, which is more of a time sync between your wheel and the in-game wheel and what the game really does. And um, you're looking to basically have zero delay between that. So um, if I turn down, uh, let's say uh, the frames, for example, you will see it takes the screen more milliseconds to update uh, the screen. So there's probably at some point going to start some delay or something. So if you drive or if you have to drive at 30, 40 frames, then it's just a limitation of your PC usually. Um, that when you turn the reel, just takes a bit for the game and screen to to update the visuals as well, and then your wheel will kind of be the virtual wheel will be trailing behind your physical wheel, which um, then for you just makes support to increase your frame rate, either hardware updates or reducing the video seconds a lot, and then either you just take some of the the presets that ACC has down here, so just, just go to the low settings for example, um. But if you want to keep some detail and a very effective way to still get frames out of the game would be the resolution scale setting. Um, I've experienced personally, there is some issue, um, depends on the screen, of course, with the G-Sync. Uh, sometimes G-Syncs on some monitors can increase the lag a bit. So I, I kind of just 
stay away from that, but I also have a beefy PC that can handle high frame rates stably, so I don't really need G-Sync to adapt the frame rate of the monitor with the frame rate of my graphics card. I should usually have about these 170 frames rather stable so I don't have to worry about it, and I just set that limit to, to there too, not needing uh, G-Sync. You can see I have V-Sync enabled now because um, this gear, um, just how, how the how the images build just looks smoother with the V-Sync on. I don't have any delay for that. So this works for me. So if you're experiencing some of this um, delay kind of thing, then one very effective is resolution scale setting that can help you with increasing your frame rate on very low end PC. The game might look a little worse, but I think it's uh, totally worth it to have more frames because it just um, gives you a better sense of what the car is doing because your visuals are updated more often. And with these rather fast cars and with a high kick, um, high, high rate of um, the physics calculation, which is as for feedback is 333 Hertz, you just want to have as many updates visually as well because this is what you work with. You have the force feedback, you have the audio, and you have the visuals that give you a sense of what the car is doing. And the more information you get from the game, the more often you get it, the more likely you will be to judge what the car is doing. So if you're driving with 30 frames, make sure to increase that either with the update or with the setting, the resolution scale here. Just go down. One more thing I want to show you is around um, breaking arches and maybe for this reason let me quickly open up the racing tim to sim tool software so what you can see is this is just data uh, i think it's mercedes or barcelona or something um, what you can see is that i am able to uh, do adaptations on the brake as i Drive along. Let's check for another braking zone here, maybe um, number two. The, the, the thing you really want to look out for: are you able, basically, to use the whole range of your your brake setup? So, can you go from 100% and could you be at 98? Could you be at 97? Could you be at 96? Could you be at any number in the whole range of these 100%? And you would see. Um, in the coaching, I just experienced a lot of people who have really sensitive brakes. So they are either on zero or on 100 or maybe at 50 or something, but they're never really going through the range in a controlled way. Um, so they have this brake so sensitive that as soon as they touch it, it goes to 100. And as soon as they release it a tiny bit, it goes to zero. And that makes it very, very difficult for them to modulate the brake going into the corner as I do. And which is the whole trail braking thing, right? If you can't do trail braking for technical reasons in your setup, you really need to find a way to get the sensitivity out of your, your pedals. And if, especially if you have a load cell, you just want to increase the pressure that you need to reach 100%. I've seen the same on throttle sometimes that people would, um, I don't have an example here in the data really, but for example, they set dead zones wrong in the game so that their throttle for example is always on two percent or so or it is never reaching a hundred percent and stops at 98 just because of uh, the dead zones or the potential meter or, or just something in the electronics not working as intended and in these scenarios you just want to go back to your controls um, check your throttle and braking pedal. Make sure these bars here go up to 100% so they really go through the whole range. And then you can see here, for example, I've set um, a dead zone at the top of 2% just to make sure the pedal always is able to reach 100%. Even if I run, I don't know, in, in the hard stop at the end, there's still some, some different values that the throttle pedal could register. And I just want to make sure I don't have to press like with 100 kilos to reach 100%. Basically, as soon as I reach that stop at the end, I want to be sure that it also is 100% in the game. Same is true for the brakes. You don't want to have the brake like trailing at 1% because, of course, it costs you speed. So in case your brake does that, make sure um, the minimum limit there is that that's what a dead zone does. It just takes away some of the um, uh, values the brake sends to the PC on the lower end. I think this 
concludes most of the important things you need to set up in your controls before you start the game. And as always, just come to the Discord for further questions. Also come to the Discord for the table of the whole steering settings for each car. We've collected it there. And other than that, uh, write in the comments what other videos you need, what other contents you need, what was clear, what wasn't in the video. Um, liking, subscribing, of course, help grow the channel. Make YouTube aware this is something it should recommend to others. And um, last hint I'll have to do is to the membership program where you get access to all the coaching lessons that I have done so far. Well, not all, just since I started recording, but um, updating this um, weekly and as with every session I do now. Um, you can tap into all these sessions, learn from them if you join the membership program. So this is it for now. Have a nice weekend. And I think Jardy's stream is starting anyway. So goodbye.